Greetings, brothers and sisters, and Jesus Christ, our King of glory, that is coming soon to harpazo us, harpoon us out of this world that we don't belong to. As it is written, we are not of this world. We are not of this world. If we are of this world, then the love of God our Father is not in us. We are set apart, which means in Hebrew to be, we are, we are Kodesh, to be set apart. Anyhow, tonight is Shabbat. Shabbat. And I wonder sometimes if, I, really, I truly wonder. And I ask, and I ask Yahuwah, our God of Israel, during Shabbat, when these people pray to you, do you do you really listen? Because it says it very clearly that if they reject the Son of God, Jesus Christ, then then you're not going to listen to their prayers. And so it makes me wonder, and that's why. That's why Daniel's 70th week, there's um, there's going to be seven years of tribulation. God is going to, Yahuwah is going to shift. When the fullness of the Gentiles comes in, he's going to shift his concentration on, on Israel, on the Jewish people. And he's going to purify their hearts. So that they may see whom they have pierced and and mourn for him and and be restored. But there's going to be a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of judgment before that. A lot of judgment and not just judgment upon Israel, but judgment upon this whole entire unrepenting and unbelieving world. And God has. Yahuwah has not Yahuwah has not um, Yahuwah has clearly told us that we are not destined to wrath to the wrath of God but destined to salvation through our Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach Jesus Christ of Nazareth For if we confess with our mouths and we believe with our hearts that Jesus Christ is Adonai, he's the master, he's the Lord of all, and that God raised him up from the dead, then you shall be saved and you will, you will not perish. But it also says in the scriptures that you must be born again in spirit, because God is spirit. And once you are justified by God, by Yahuwah, the God of Israel, because you because you believe that Jesus Christ came into this world 2,000 years ago to preach the repentance of sins and that he was he was tortured, he was crucified and he died and he was buried in a tomb but on a third day God raised him up from the dead because he was the spotless lamb of God he never sinned while he was here on earth and God raised him up from the dead and he ascended into the into the Shamayins which is the heavens and is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come in his glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have absolutely no end. When all is said and done. After with the 1000 year millennial reign. Every knee, will, every knee will bend and every tongue will confess. That our Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach.
is the savior of the world that he is he is the king of kings lord of lords the prince of peace every knee will bend and every tongue will confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god our father i wanted to read to you psalm 37 tonight but from from my uh my my my, my hebrew bible that translates everything kind of like from uh, English to Hebrew. Um, so it's just more accurate. But I think a lot of people need to read Psalm 37 because it's a promise to those who are are being bullied by this world. We have to remember that Adonai, which means master, our master, Jesus Christ, is our refuge as it says in psalm 91 and i'm going to read psalm 91 and psalm th psalm 37 but first i'm going to read start off with psalm 37 because i think it's important for us to remember that you know a lot of us are totally flabbergasted with what's going on in this world the amount of evil and and especially within our family units that's going on and it's just it hurts us because God has softened our hearts. As born again believers, we have softened hearts. We do not have hardened hearts like the rest of the world does. And that's why we care. That's why we love one another. We love our neighbors as ourselves. Remember, Jesus said that the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, strength, and soul. And the second is just as important. And that is to love your neighbor as yourself. Among, among these two commandments hang all of the law and the prophets. So we got to take that seriously. We really do. Really, really take that seriously. And um, you must be born again. Because our default nature when we enter into this world is to be born into this world. Live a life of want, of desire, of pleasure, of seeking, of making money, of being the best that we can be. And then we fade away. We fade away into the dust. And, uh, and nobody remembers us after 20, 30, 40 years. Right? And it's a scary thing to fall into the land, into the hands of the one and true living God. That's why it's so important that, you know, salvation starts today. Whoever is hearing this right now, salvation starts today. Make the decision that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, that he died on the cross for my sin, your sins, and the sins of the world. He was crucified, died, and was buried. But on the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. God raised him up from the dead and he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He defeated um, evil. He said it is finished. And it is finished. He, de he defeated the foe, our adversary, Satan. You have to remember that God gave you, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, gave you all the power, all, not just some, all the power to trample upon the forces of darkness and no evil shall befall on you. None. Tap into those resources. Pray spiritual warfare prayers. Bind up whatever is going on in your life. For example, If you have, if you have if you have uh, sexually impure thoughts, you bind them up. You bind them up in the name that is above all names, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. My King of Glory, I bind up and I cast away the spirit 
of sexual immorality. I bind it up and I cast it away into the dark abyss where it will be held in chains until the day of God's judgment. That's it. God has given you the authority to do that. If you have the Holy Spirit, if you have the Ruach HaKodesh, then you're able to do that without any problems. It works. Whatever you bind up on earth and whatever you loosen up here on earth shall be bound up in heaven and loosened up in heaven. And then you'll say, in the name of my beloved King of Glory, Jesus Christ, through His atoning blood, I loosen restoration, gladness of heart, joy, peace. I loosen pure thoughts. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. I rebuke you, you, you evil, unclean spirits. And you see, whatever you loosen on earth and you bind up here on earth shall be loosened in heaven and bound up in heaven. Do you understand that? It's very important. Spiritual warfare is important. And once you get the hang of it, it it, it, it really, you feel, oh, what a sense of relief afterwards. You feel empowered. And that is the, the spirit of, the spirit of um, the spirit of Yahuwah, the God of Israel, the spirit that He gave you. Once you were justified, He gave you His spirit, that so it could sanctify you, and it could chisel away, it could chisel away at all your impurities, and that's our difficult part, the sanctification part, because. Through His grace, you're sanctified and cleansed of all your unrighteousness by the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. But it's the sanctification part. Remember what the Bible says? He who started a good work in you will see it to completion on the day of Christ Jesus. But what is the day of Christ Jesus? That's the day when He's revealed to you on the rapture. It's not the second coming. It's totally different. And so that's why those who are, those of us who were born again true born again Christians who have the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ inside of them we are being sanctified and we'll see it to completion on the day of Christ Jesus the the the, the battle between the flesh and the spirit will always be there Although you think you'll have you, know, you have one hundred percent control over it, you don't. It'll always be there. It'll it'll creep up on a on a more opportune time, right? When, like Satan says, um, I forgot the Bible verse, but he he'll come again at a more opportune time, and uh, we need to be ready for it because he's so subtle in his ways. He knows the scriptures back and forth, but I don't think he truly believes in them because if he did, it'd be a different story. But we, we are children of light. We are children of the Most High, El Elyon, children of the, of the Almighty, El Shaddai. And we are predestined to be in the Lamb's Book of Life before the earth was even formed. And so I just want you to, re I want to remind you of that. And with that being said, I just want to read to you Ephesians. Um, Ephesians, the beginning of Ephesians. And I'm going to read it from the NLT version because it just sounds nicer. Um... And here we go. 
Ephesians 1. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. I am writing to God's holy people in Ephesus who are faithful followers of Christ Jesus. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Even before He made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in His eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into His own family by bringing us to Himself through Jesus Christ. This is what He wanted to do, and they gave Him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace He has poured out on us who belong to His dear Son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that He purchased our freedom with the blood of His Son and forgave our sins. He has showered His kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. God has now revealed to us His mysterious plan regarding Christ, a plan to fulfill His own good pleasure. And this is the plan. At the right time, He will bring everything together under the, under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God, for He chose us in advance, and He makes everything work out according to His plan. God's purpose that we Jews who were the first to trust in Christ would bring praise and glory to God. And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, He identified you as His own by giving you the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, whom He promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that He will give us the inheritance He promised and that He purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. Oh, let me tell you, there's not one day that I go by that I don't not. When I pray, I enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with never ending praise and glory and honor and adoration. He is so worthy. What an awesome, awesome Yahuwah we serve. Our God of uh, our God of Israel. So let me just go over In the NLT I'll do it too. I'll go over Psalm thirty seven. Alrighty, here we go. Don't worry about the wicked. This is Psalm 37, a Psalm of David. Don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong. For like grass, they soon fade away. Like spring flowers, they soon wither. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you your heart's desires. Commit everything that you do to the Lord. Trust Him, and He will help you. He will make your innocence radiate like the dawn, and the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday sun. Be still in the presence of the Lord, and wait patiently for Him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. Stop being angry. Turn from your rage. Do not lose your temper. It only leads to harm. For the wicked will be destroyed. But those who trust in the Lord will possess the land. Soon the wicked will disappear. Though you look for them, they will be gone. The lowly will possess the land and will live in peace and prosperity. The wicked plot against the godly. They snarl at them in defiance. But the Lord just laughs. For he sees their day of judgment coming. The wicked draw their swords and string their bows to kill the poor and the oppressed, to slaughter those who do right. But their swords will stab their own hearts, and their, bow and their bows will be broken. It is better to be godly and have little than to be evil and rich. For the strength of the wicked will be shattered, but the Lord takes care of the godly. 
Day by day, the Lord takes care of the innocent and they will receive an inheritance that lasts forever. They will not be disgraced in hard times. Even in famine, they will have more than enough. But the wicked will die. The Lord's enemies are like flowers in a field. They will disappear like smoke. The wicked borrow and never repay. But the godly are generous givers. Those the Lord blesses will possess the land. But those he curses will die. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delight he delight he delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will never fall, for the Lord holds them by the hand. Once I was young, and now I am old, yet I have never seen the godly abandoned or their children begging for bread. The godly always give generous loans to others, and their children are a blessing. Turn from evil and do good, and you will live in the land forever. For the Lord loves justice, and he will never abandon the godly. He will keep them safe forever, but the children of the wicked will die. The godly will possess the land, and will live there forever. The godly offer good counsel. They teach right from wrong. They have made God's law their own, so they will never slip from his path. The wicked wait in ambush for the godly, looking for an excuse to kill them. But the Lord will not let the wicked succeed, or let the godly be condemned when they are put on trial. Put your hope in the Lord. Travel steadily along his path. He will honor you by giving you the land. You will see the wicked destroyed. I have seen wicked and ruthless people flourishing like a tree in its native soil. But I, but when I looked again, they were gone. Though I searched for them, I could not find them. Look at those who are honest and good. For a wonderful future awaits those who love peace. But the rebellious will be destroyed. They have no future. The Lord rescues the godly. He is their fortress in times of trouble. The Lord helps them, rescuing them from the wicked. He saves them, and they find shelter in him. Hallelujah. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Beautiful, isn't it? The word of God is so beautiful, and I encourage you to... to, to um. Stop watching YouTube so much, like I do. <laughs> and, and, and really, we need to go into the Word more. Just because we read it, knowledge is being released every day. And what you read five, let's just say what you read three weeks ago, if you read it again today, things will stand out at you that you didn't see three weeks ago. That's the way it is. That's how things are revealed to us. So, anyways, I just wanted to, Yahuwah, I ask that you, that you put your blessing on all those who are hearing this right now. Yevarechecha Adonai v'yish merecha, Yair Adonai panav elecha v'ikunecha. Isa Adonai Panav Elecha Vayasem Lecha Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance unto you and continue to give you his shalom in the powerful name of our King of Glory. Our Adonai, Yahushua HaMashiach, Amen and Amen.